I'm all set, so let's give this a shot now. Yeah. I thought you'd lost your goddamn mind. Or I hope that's what happened. Oh, yes. That would have made things easier. But I wasn't that lucky. You sure about that? I assure you. I'm as sane as you are, Captain. No matter. John? And now we get to this. Me. I'm done playing games, John. I assure you, this is no game. I'm going to count to five. Then I'm pulling the trigger. You're not real. This is all in my head. Are you sure? Maybe it's in mine. One. No. Everything. All this. It was your fault. If that's what you believe, then shoot me. Two. I... I didn't mean to hurt anybody. No one ever does, Walker. Three. Four. Is this really what you want, Walker? So be it. Five! Okay, so there is a different ending. ending where he shot himself. This is Colonel John Conrad, United States Army. Has the evacuation of Dubai ended in complete failure. Death toll Farewell to arms. So that's the, the other one. And then that ends it right there too. So technically there's three endings. Well, I guess there's two, but then in the epilogue you get another choice. So it's like farewell to you are believed arms too late hero carrying on soldier live and let live damn so the entire time he was basically like having an episode where he uh he thought john connor was talking to him but he wasn't rip it's intense, man. Definitely worth playing. Uh, it was still fun as a base game, seeing everything. These honestly, these screenshots make it look a lot better than what actually it looked like in game. But still, still great game. Uh, let me see. Actually, let's watch a a quick video since we finished it I guess I use Firefox instead because that's usually better YouTube not signed in here so uh spec ops line ending this ending explained What has the most massive spoilers? Of course. <laughs> the secret story of Spec Ops? Oh, Modern Warfare story. All three epilogue endings? Wait, there's three of them? Wait, what? Hold up. What's the other one? Arms. 
We are here. Is there a way I can put this in dark mode even though it's not signed in? Okay, yeah, you can. There you go. Help. But first, I just... To go. So that's if Light. you lay down your weapon. Shell shot. Remember back in... Cover. Remember back in about... Down your weapon. Careful. What? That's the same thing, isn't it? Oh, uh, wait. Unless if you kill all of them without dying. Yeah. Okay, so there is a third. Falcon 1, this is command. Do you copy? We heard shots. Is everything okay? Sergeant Roberts, what is going on? Gentlemen, welcome to Dubai. Damn. So that's the other alternative ending. So to make this right, it was Conrad pretty much did everything. Fine music. All moments of insanity. So, Conrad died, but then we thought that we were talking to him the entire time, but he wasn't actually there. Your eyes, Walker. I, I need watch you to see what you've done. Dubai should have died long ago. The story of Spec Ops The Line seems to be a fairly straightforward one at first. You assume the role of Captain Martin Walker, the leader of a Delta Operative Squad sent into Dubai to locate any survivors after the devastating sandstorms hit the city. However, through the course of the game, Spec Ops The Line turns into a much more complex game, and by the end, it can leave you with a lot of unanswered questions, especially if you paid attention. Now before you go any further, I want to warn you, this video is a straight game for yourself. Because honestly, the story is all the Spec Ops Align really has going for it. Now that's not a negative, that's just to say it's the best part of the game. So without further ado, you have been warned, let's get on with the analysis. Spec Ops Align opens up with an on-rails helicopter turret section. By a gameplay standard, this is pretty boring. But story-wise, this is probably the most I mean, essential so part fun, in the whole game. Now there are a couple of different ways to interpret this scene. The first is just that it's a standard flashback, something that already happened to the characters. Another way of interpreting this is that this is the very last moment of all of our main characters' lives. In a developer interview with Walt Williams, the lead writer for Spec Ops The Line, he brings up this point of view that Walker and pals actually die in this helicopter crash that opens the game. This also happens to be the way that I interpret it, mostly because I read the interview. I took Walt's suggestion of a way to perceive the story as more of a nudge saying that this is what we intended for the story to actually be. And when you look around, there are a lot of clues that point to this being probably what happened. Let's take the next scene, the flashback to earlier, for an example. We see Walker and Adams and Lugo walking through a sandstorm talking about their current objective. Now if you press enter and skip it, then you get a normal black fade into the game. But as Walt also pointed out in the same interview, the transitions and the fades are integral to understanding the story as well. Whenever the game fades to black, that's just a normal transition, like the game is actually just proceeding on. But whenever the game fades in or out to white, 
then that is when Walker is hallucinating wow. or he's lying and machine. deceiving himself in some Walker. way. Now, if you look at the opening scene after the helicopter scene and you don't skip it, then you'll notice that the scene actually fades into white. Now, this could mean a couple of things, hmm. but the way that I took it is that the rest right, of the right, game from this point on no is actually in Walker's right. head. Like the whole game from this point to the second like helicopter sexy. scene is sort of a flashback yeah, of Walker like reliving his very last right. moments alive. This theory is supported by some kind of weird thing going on in the very first chapter. So they're, like they're, they're just Conrad's theories, speech being heard by Walker, but not Adams or Lugo, or seeing Conrad's face on the side of a delivery truck. We also see pictures on billboards and paintings on walls of people with their eyes scratched out in mm -hmm. front of horrific acts of violence, showing the environment reacting to the horrible things that are going on around you that normally wouldn't happen in reality. Now, like I said before, the way that I'm interpreting this is that Walker died in the helicopter crash that opens the game. So everything from the beginning to the second helicopter crash is him reliving the events. So he doesn't know that he's dead, which is why he still hallucinates the same things that he did when he was alive. Now, this is all great and wonderful. It gives us an explanation for what happened from the beginning to the second helicopter scene. But what happens after? What I think is that what happens after the helicopter scene is all Walker making his way through hell. Yeah, that's right, hell, like the iconic fire and brimstone. Except for Walker, it's not quite the same. Walker's hell is being stuck in Dubai with all of the horrible things that he's done to the people that he claims to be trying to rescue. I mean, the first thing that Walker sees when he wakes up from the helicopter crash is the Burj Khalifa on fire and has Conrad reprimanding him for everything that he's done. Everything that happens after the second helicopter crash is downright sadistic. You watch Lugo get maimed by a bunch of civilians, and then the game all but forces you to mow down those civilians. Again, the same people that you claim to be trying to save. A couple minutes well, I mean, later, I you're running through a down. turret field, and all of a sudden Walker gets a hallucination of civilians burning alive and running towards him, with Conrad mockingly telling you, Welcome to hell, Walker. Shortly after that, a hallucination of Lugo pops out of the door with a giant shotgun trying to kill you and Adam. But what are you forced to do? Well, you have to kill Lugo again. And then what happens just a couple minutes after you're forced to kill Lugo for the second time? Well, you have to abandon Adams and basically watch him die. We never see him die, but yeah, we know what happens. Everything after the second helicopter crash just seems to have it out for Walker. I mean, okay even after Lugo dies, Adams, Lugo the guy who was fall. once faithful in Walker, just tears into him, know. saying that Lugo's, Lugo's blood is on your hands, hands and then points mine. a fake gun at him and pulls the Bad. trigger. All of this seems to be a sort of torture chamber for Walker, the way that most of us envision hell would probably be like. However, somehow Walker pushes through all of it and makes it to the Burj Can't Khalifa the and the finally crowd, confronts not. Conrad. Most just to find out this the option. truth that Conrad has been dead the whole time that they've been there. To always shoot Staring the into a mirror at the top of the Burj Khalifa, Walker has to face his own personal demon in the form of Conrad himself. It seems that reports of my... Wait, wait, hold on. What's this guy say? I actually died after killing the Lugo hallucination. I went into the building, got killed by those elite guys, and instead of conventional respawn, you died. Popping up in the game reloads at the checkpoint, some weird crap happened, some blurry white black image popped up, and then I popped back at the point where Lugo hallucination comes out. But instead of Lugo coming out, a regular heavy guy comes out. Any thoughts? See that loading screen? Twink twinkle, twinkle, spec ops to see that loading screen again? It's a unique loading screen that happens if you die during or shortly after... The Lugo Heavy encounter, which conven conveniently also replaces Lugo Heavy with the standard Heavy. It's a black and white constraint of the painting in the beginning of the game. Okay. The event is basically Walker spiraling and sadly com combined with just losing Lugo. Uh, ring a ring. Ring a ring of roses. Survival. Have been greatly exaggerated. 
Now there are two ways to end the actual game, and in a lot of the things that I've read, a lot of people discount the suicide option. Five, However, I trigger. think that that is the true way that the game ends. If we look at Conrad as Walker's sure? personal demon who doesn't mind. want him to escape from this hell what? and just yeah. wants to torture him for the rest of eternity, yeah, then I the get suicide what this option is saying. probably the only way that Walker can me. get out. Two. You can tell by the way that Conrad speaks and the way that he counts down when he's about to shoot Walker. He really doesn't want Three. to. He gives Walker multiple chances to opt out Four. and then right before he shoots him, he asks Walker, is this what you really want? And then pulls the trigger. So be it. Five. If we look at the other ending that leads Three. to the epilogue, we'll notice a couple interesting points in the scene. First, the soldier that comes up to check up on you, he's clearly an imagination, and when you turn to face him, he and Conrad's body are both gone. This raises a bunch of questions that I do not have answers to, so I'm not even going to attempt that right now. But then when we look at the epilogue, first thing we notice is that Walker is wearing a different uniform. He's wearing Conrad's yeah, he's wearing uniform, has his name tag on it and everything. If we look closely at the epilogue's transitions, we'll notice that the epilogue fades in from black, meaning that it's very possible that this is a canon ending as well. The other interesting transitions that you'll notice is that when you take the route of killing all the American soldiers and you die, you'll get uh, yelled at by Conrad saying you can't go home and the game will fade to black. If you kill all the American soldiers and you live, You'll be the badass walker who gentlemen. says, Welcome to Dubai, gentlemen, Welcome and walks off Dubai. into Dubai, which also fades to black. But if you give up your weapon to the American soldiers, when mm. you hop in the car, the game will transition to white, to white. and then go into the pre rendered cutscene where the soldier asks you, it's How over. did you make it out alive? What this says to me is that the only possible good ending that this game had is just a hallucination by Walker. What this also tells me is that the epilogue is a trick by Conrad or your personal demon to make you think you're going home, but truly, all these endings lead back to Dubai, where Walker is going to relive his personal hell once again until he finally makes that choice to kill himself. Dude, I never because realized video games have taught us for the game to truly be over, you have to kill the bad guy. And in Spec Ops The Line, who's really the bad guy? Conrad or Walker? How'd you survive all this? Who said I did? It's crazy. Wild. That's that's even more in depth than I was thinking. I didn't realize. Uh let me see. Spec Ops the line. Easter eggs. I'm sure there's yeah. Uh let's see. Captain Excellent does pretty good one. There's just well, typically there's ads, but this video we got an ad blocker. For Spec Ops Online. If you've never played this game, and I highly, highly recommend that you do, then please do not watch, as I believe that this game should be experienced by everybody at least once. In my opinion, the game you may not have noticed when playing the game, along with some very, very subtle foreshadowing which was extremely well done. If you have played the game, I would love to know what your thoughts or the experience were in the comments down below, and I hope you enjoyed the video. After this, we'll uh, switch to something else. I don't know what exactly I'm going to be playing yet, but... On a large tree... When approaching the tree, it appears to be full of leaves. As you pass the tree and look back, the tree will be dead, perhaps foreshadowing the water shortage about to Dubai. Probably didn't need to pause it. Yeah. Okay, so that's the tree. And then, like, when you leave. There's the tree dead.
start of chapter nine as you abseal down a building you can see a reflection in the window of a body hanging this is the same place your squad mate would go Absol dies, who happens to be hanged by the locals later on in the story. I thought you said you knew him. Thought uh, I did. Yeah. That's a bold statement. You claim you knew him. Right there. There he is. The Robok! Shoot the roof! Everyone back now! Come on, brother. Get your ass up! You heard him! Back up! Right now! I said back the fuck up! Hurry up, Walker! Breathe, Lugo! They ain't taking the hit! God damn it, breathe! So during chapter 9, you can find that the names Lugo and Adams on a memorial wall. Lugo and Adams are your squad mates, both of whom died during the game, but are not dead during the scene. There's also apparently a developer. I don't appreciate this is the part that you see in the cuts error in one of the screenshots. I see. Where is it? Uh, I see Sergeant Lugo and Lieutenant Adams. Huh. I feel like that kind of even supports the last guy's thought process as well. Um, with the whole, basically, the entire game is, uh, what's his face? Uh, Walker going through hell. You have a choice whether to kill rigs or not. Depending on your choice, certain parts of the level will change. Huh. Can't see. Oh shit! As it's going on, I'm trying to Hang think on. what to play. I'll get you out of there. Once this is over. Forget it. There's no point. The water's gone. That's all that matters. <laughs> Fuck. This ain't how it's supposed to end. He was right about you. Look, if people find out what he did, the whole region will declare war on us, and we'll lose. Now the world will never know. Hmm. You're insane. It's funny. Gould said the same thing. What I did may not have been nice, but it was right. Besides, it's not like I'm walking out of here. Just do me a favor. Huh? Don't let me burn. Go on, Walker. Do it. Please. So what changes? I'm surprised he showed the entire cutscene there? there. Come on! But maybe it's like a reminder for the people I didn't watch it. Okay, so if you shoot him... What happens? Is everyone dead if you Walker. shoot him? Walker, come in. Yeah, I'm here. Thank God. The 33rd showed up before we found you. We had to run. Oh, what? Started to think you didn't make it. I got lucky. Graffiti of a man dead. with a headshot wound. No, not good. He fucked us. Fucked everybody. Thanks to him, everyone in Dubai will be dead in a few days. 
The city needs to be evacuated. Ooh, that doesn't sound good, Marty. Don't be shy now. It's just you, me, and several thousand very thirsty listeners. Hey, dead cells. Thank you for the follow, man. Appreciate it. How you doing today? <laughs> it really does change a lot. <laughs> he sings an entire different song if you shoot him. Where the hell are you going? Walker. Walker. Wow. It's a lot more than I was expecting. Different than you would Walker. 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 And then, yeah, I did see that graffiti has changed to a lighter and a man being burnt. That what that's supposed to be? Ah. Sit tight, Luco. I'm on my way. Huh. Make sure he gets the message. Go fuck yourself. And then also the. The ant thing is dead. Don't be shy now. Or what, the antler or whatever animal that was. Statues now have orange glow to them as if they're on fire. Huh. I know. Oh, maybe I just didn't realize the song he sings. Huh. Great game, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely uh definitely an interesting one, worth playing. If you die during chapter thirteen or fourteen, you will see strange game over screens. Ah, that's where it, okay. I'm glad that they showed this one. I just finished the game like probably like thirty minutes ago, so I've been watching like uh Easter egg videos and like analysis. Okay, so if he dies, so then he it fades to white, which means that he's hallucinating. And then it fades back into white. Instead of like a regular. Lugo comes out. He dies. Fades to white. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Huh. And then it looks like it's like one of the paintings from the beginning of the game, too. And it fades back in. Yeah, I'm starting to, to think that's part of it then. Come on, Get the the and there's you that. Back up right now. Yeah, I'm starting to think that actually the entire the entire game is that he is already dead and in hell. From the helicopter crash. Crazy. Interesting game. Very, very, very interesting. Worth playing, worth trying. All that good stuff. Um, let me see what games we can play now, though. Because I, I only have, like, two... Alright, chat. I am back. And I think we're just about good to go here. Uh, one sec, I'm just checking something real quick. Okay. Uh, looks like we should be good. Let's go ahead and get this playthrough started of what remains of Edith Finch. I think this is the beginning of the game. Um, I think it just puts us right into it, I guess. Or at least that's my guess. Let's see the title screen. And we're on some sort of boat. Oh, okay. Journal. A lot of this okay. isn't going to make sense to you, and I'm sorry about that. 
I'm just going to start at the beginning with the house. Whoa. Cool. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to turn off. Yeah. There we go. Sensitivity is pretty low, so I'll bump it up a bit. I here until I was 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. So, okay, not so urgent. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. Don't look down. Inner will. My I was trying to say your arm. Key, but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Oh, there it is. Maybe she thought I'd know, or she thought the mystery would be enough to bring me back. The finches. So we have some sort of. I wouldn't have driven this way in a long time, but I saw a few hoof prints. Can we run? Is there is there controls for this? Controls. Yeah. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. Mm. It's a very uh, the house was exactly like interesting I house. The way I'd been dreaming about it. Missing Milton Finch. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Missing, 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 missing. Bunch of flyers everywhere. Now, as a 17 year old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. It's weird, you have to like grab it and then open it. Looking in, I felt like the house itself had been waiting for me. Gosh, <laughs> the control's kind of weird. I guess even 800 might be better. Uh-oh. The lights just flickered. Actually gonna crawl through here? Crawling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. Eddie. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture. My mom was the only one of us who could imagine Great Grandma Edie living in a nursing home. Oh, Edie. <laughs> I said Eddie. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it, like a smile with too many teeth. Eh. Yeah. 
After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. My Grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother, Calvin. What? Like, actually dead? As a kid, I just assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. Well, that's a weird room, Gregory. Seven, Eddie. Edie. Sorry. The last time I was in Edith Sr.'s room, I was ten and she was painting my portrait. That's so weird how basically like each room is basically like a I spent a lot of time playing in great uncle Walter's room Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him ah. Turns out my mom was really good at keeping secrets What? Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. We stand the paintings up. on the wall. It was clear my brother Milton had been here before me. Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan, but I had no idea what was behind that door. I was trying to open. It's very weird moving the controller around, or not controller, uh, like I had mouse. No idea where all this was gonna lead. I grew up looking at Molly's room through the peephole. Is there one? There is. Why is how does she grow up Being looking inside at it? for the first time? I felt like I'd stepped behind a painting. I got the sense Edie had spent a lot of time here. December 13th, 1947. Dear diary. I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's going to happen. It started when Mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. My Halloween candy was all gone. Don't eat the fish. Okay. I kept eating and eating. No, 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 no. Don't eat the toothpick. Kid, no. Late. I, I ate a lot I of ate. things that night. This is so bad. Then I heard chirping outside my window. It was a barn swallow going back to her nest. I reached out for her. And suddenly... What the? She became a cat? a cat? I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. Mom and Dad didn't even look at me. Wait, were they in there? Oh, they are. Whoa. Get back here, you. I jumped and I almost got her. Almost. She was getting really tired. Now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. 
All I cared about was eating that mama bird. Oh my gosh. You monster. I her up. And suddenly, I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass. This. Yeah, I don't see it. Rabbits. I don't see him. Wait, in the grass? Oh, got one. I imagine his face looking up and seeing mine through my talons. I swallowed him up you and I didn't chew one bit. <laughs> then I flew off to find something bigger. What the hell? <laughs> Mama rabbit? No, not the mama rabbit. Not the mama rabbit. She was almost too big to carry. I started choking, but I couldn't stop eating. And suddenly, I was a shark. The hell? A shark. <laughs> A shark crawling down the hill. I rolled off a cliff and into the ocean. Now, I was hungrier than ever. Alright, how do we get down? Okay, there it is. I wanted fat, juicy suits. Her flipper, and it tasted really good. Okay, oh, there it is. Grabbed on tight. Oh. When I was so hungry, I jumped out of the water. When I opened my eyes, everything had changed. What the? Now I was a monster and I smelled people up there. I was big, but I moved real quiet. Yeah, ah! This something else. I 
and a house. I got closer and closer. My stomach started growling. And suddenly, I was me again. I held my breath for a long time, but I couldn't hear anything. I think it's waiting for me to fall asleep. But it's not going to wait much longer. It needs to be, and we both know. What the hell? I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. 37 to 47, then Barbara, then Calvin. So I guess we go through each one of them. Edie was 17 to 2010. Whoa. What? Damn. Odin. So Odin is where it starts. And then it goes up to Sam and Walter. Walter ends. Sam's goes out to 47. Wait, what? That doesn't make any sense. If Sam was born in night born in nineteen fifty. Oh, so it goes from what? Thirty seven? Odin died in the same year as Molly. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I'm just gonna keep playing <laughs> and see what happens. Okay. I can't describe it, but I felt like some part of Molly was still here. Yeah. The cat. This will be obvious later, but my mom never told me any of these stories. Edie would have, but mom didn't like bringing up the past. Hold on. I just want to like turn yeah brightness just a little bit like the game's a little dark at times okay that's fine though when we adopted a stray kitten she was the one who named it Molly I spent a lot of time in great grandma Edie's room we got along and it was a good place to hide from my mom when Edie told people Sven was killed by a dragon, she could also have said he was building a dragon-shaped slide that collapsed. She could have, but she didn't. Was it Sven? Sven. Her room was like a museum. Did she have a? For 500 years, the Finches have been famous throughout Norway for their fortune. Odin Finch buries the latest victims of the family curse. His wife, Ingeborg, and their newborn son, Johan. On January 7th, 1937, he set sail with his family and his house, hoping to leave the curse behind. But 40-foot waves off the coast of Washington send the house and Odin to the bottom of the sea. Odin's daughter Edie, with husband Sven and baby Molly, step ashore on their new home, Orcas Island. Mm. Okay. So Odin had a daughter Edie. Edie uh, married Sven, and they had Molly. Odin Finch is the first to be buried in the new family cemetery. Okay. His daughter Edie is already dreaming of a new Finch house. 
been famous through Norway and their fortune and its fortune. Okay. That's cool. Whatever's wrong with this family, it goes back a long ways. <laughs> 